What's up everyone? This is Dr. Webb here. Um, today I wanted to talk about um, the cost of uh, medical education, um, the cost associated with obtaining a medical doctorate degree. Um, medical school, the training to become a physician is very long. Uh, you have to go through four years of college, four years of medical school, and anywhere between three to nine years of residency training, depending on what you want to specialize in. Um, so the path is, is, uh, is, is a very long path. And if you add up the amount of years that it takes, uh, I would say on average, uh, 13 to 15 years to become a uh, physician, surgeon, if you want to become a surgeon, or even longer if you want to become a neurosurgeon. Um, <clears throat> so your friends that are going off to college um, and then they complete college and then go straight to their jobs, um, they could be at an advantage at, uh, versus someone who's going to medical school because you really won't make any money until you're done with residency, um, which, like I said, could be after your four years of college, you have to go through another four years of medical school and um, for orthopedic surgery, it's five years of surgery training. So a lot of uh, studies have come out that have shown that um, if you calculate those figures and the amount of money is that you will miss by not going straight to work instead of going to um, instead going to medical school it could be from five hundred thousand to a million dollars that you would miss out on um, the cost of your medical education is on the rise uh, most medical students come out with about two hundred thousand to two hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of debt uh, that's according to the AAMC uh, website um, so I think it's important to uh, do these following things if you're considering going to medical school. Uh, number one, I would think of it as an investment um, rather than this long drawn out process where you have to pay back money. Um, I always tell students to compare it to a home mortgage. Most home mortgages you get a loan for about 30 years. Um, think of it as that because like I said most students come out with about two hundred thousand two hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of loans if you think of it as an investment for your future I think uh, it will um, you will be better at understanding why uh, you have to spend that much money to uh, receive a, a MD degree um, the next I would say take in consideration your college start off at your college that you go to if you can go to a community college versus a four-year university for the first two years, I would highly recommend that just because you can save a lot of money uh, going to a community college and also your class is going to be a lot smaller. Uh, you can have more face FaceTime one-on-one with your uh, professors and your uh, your teachers so they'll get to know you better and can write you letters of recommendation. So you can save money that way. Uh, next, you can save money by joining the military. The military, the Air Force, Army, uh, Navy will actually pay you while you're in medical school um, a stipend and they'll pay for all your tuition, all your books, all your fees, and you just owe them a commitment of um, anywhere between four and seven years, uh, depending on how much they pay for. Um, so you can get that money, um, your uh, education or your tuition paid for, you just have to owe time to the military. And there are lots of different advantages, disadvantages to going into the military, and maybe I can speak on that in another talk, but um, you have to take into consideration that you could be sent to a place that you don't want to go to. Um, you could go to war, um, and you could, a lot of your training could be affected by uh, you just going joining in the military. You may not be able to do a fellowship or specialize right away when you want to. You have to do it on the military's time. But at least you'll have your education paid for. Um, when you're applying to medical school, I think it's important to look at the type of the school that you're going to because different schools are, they charge different amounts for your tuition. So when you're applying to medical school, just look at the tuition and see how much they're charging. Um, there's a study that came out by the, um, by News Weekly that I'm sorry, U.S. News that said that um, the lowest private school was actually Baylor um, and some in-state tuition for uh, schools that are, are some of the lowest amounts that they charge was, are in Texas, Texas A&M, 
UT San Antonio, UT Galveston, those are some of the schools that are going to charge you the least amount to go to their um, uh, to medical school. So if you can save $100,000 by going to a cheaper school, I would highly recommend doing that. Um, Georgetown, where I went to medical school, was very expensive. Um, I think total was about $80,000 per year. So if you add that times four years, that's what most graduates from Georgetown or like Harvard, um, lots of the, the Ivy League schools, um, the tuition is very high. If you have family or friends that can uh, pay your pay some of your tuition, I think that'll be helpful. But most people uh, just graduating college don't have family that can just cough up $50,000 per year to pay for your medical school. There are lots of different scholarships out there that you can apply for. Um, I had a few scholarships in medical school uh, just by searching online and applying for them or at my school. I, uh, I was given a few scholarships just by um, applying and uh, putting in an application, letters of recommendation. I got scholarships that way. Um, another thing that you can do is you can uh, have your loans forgiven if you work in a underserved area. And I think you have to do this for about 10 years and your loans will be forgiven. There, I don't think there's been anyone who has had their loans forgiven because this is, this is a new program, but that is something that um, you can consider. Um, do I think that medical school, um, the cost of medical school, the amount of years is worth it? I do. Um, it also depends on your specialty. If you go into pediatrics, they're some of the lowest paid specialties. But if you go into like orthopedic surgery, if you go into uh, neurosurgery, gastroenterology, uh, those specialties, you'll come out making, uh, you know, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars a year, and um, you can easily pay those loans back. So, I always tell students to look at it as an investment. It is expensive, but you can pay these uh, loans back with the uh, salary that you will be making, and uh, and. One thing that people always tell me and some advice of older surgeons or older physicians that they always have is to um, um, live within your means. Uh, your first year out of residency, you're gonna get a nice paycheck. You may get a $75,000 signing bonus. You might get a job for $600,000 a year, but you have to live within your means. You can't go out and splurge and buy a uh, Bentley or uh, buy this million dollar house. Um, slowly pay off your loans and um, put money away for the future and IRAs and and, um, and you know essentially make your money work work for you um, so that's one piece of advice that uh, seems common among everyone that I talk to physicians who I ask for advice what would you do that's what they always recommend um, take in consideration the, the name of your medical school and where you go and how much it will cost if you can save $100,000 by going to a school two states away, I would try to do that. And also look into military scholarships and also the loan forgiveness program. Um, but medical school, I think becoming a physician, becoming a surgeon is definitely worth it. There are lots of different changes in healthcare that are going to be coming, out, coming in the uh, near future. But um, I wouldn't tr trade this job for nothing in the world. And I think it's the best job out there. Um, it is a long very long road, but just have to take it one day at a time. If you guys have any more questions, you can hit me up on my website, antoniawebmd.com, or email me at overcomingtheoddsbook at gmail.com. See you next time.